Hey guys, this is J Dog Four Three Three Four. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make these guys. I uh, I call them disc wheel covers. I mean, they're basically just covers made out of cardboard that go over your back wheel or front wheel. Uh, you're mainly going to see them in bike polo because people put them over their wheels to protect their spokes from getting hit by the mallets or the ball. But I just use them because I've always really liked the way that a solid disc wheel in the back looks. Um, this disc wheel is pretty much only for recreational use. I wouldn't really expect to get any aerodynamic benefits from it because the cardboard is going to ripple and kind of, you know, bend from the way it's held on with the zip ties. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of just for fun. I wouldn't expect to do anything serious with it, but, you know, it'll definitely get you some attention. It'll, uh, you know, make your bike look all flashy and uh, cool. I just think that it looks pretty good, so, uh, why don't we go ahead and make some? All right. So first, you're going to need to find yourself some cardboard. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be using cardboard that came from a uh, box that is used to ship wheels in. You can get a box like this from your local bike shop. Um, the reason why I'm using this box is because it's a relatively thin box, probably uh, two to three millimeters. And uh, the box is also big enough to be cut according to the diameter of your wheel that you're using. Next you'll need a cutting device, next you'll need a pair of scissors, next you're going to want to use some zip ties, you're going to want about 40 of these guys, next you'll want to have some, uh, some electric tape, next you'll want some gift cards, I'm using Starbucks gift cards in this video, next you'll want some various measuring utensils, next you'll be wanting some various writing utensils. Next you'll want a geometrical compass. Next you'll want some spray paint. Next you're going to be needing a drill and drill bits. Next you're going to be needing a vise. And lastly, you'll be needing yourself a wheel. Alright, so first you're going to start by cutting up your box into individual sheets, which will you, th you will then uh, cut your discs out of. Then you're gonna take one of the uh, the arms that came off of the box. <clears throat> you're gonna cut a little rectangle out of it. This rectangle is going to be used for a ruler in a sense. Just make sure that it's longer than 12 inches. Um, you're then going to take your ruler and leave a marking at the zero inch mark. and then leave a marking at the 12 inch mark. And then you're gonna take a pen and you're going to poke a slight hole through one of the marks and then you're gonna take a really sharp pencil and poke a very slight hole through the other mark. The reason why this hole needs to be so slight is so that there's no play in between where the pencil sticks out. Uh, next you're going to measure out your cardboard and find where the midpoint is lengthwise. Next you're going to find where the midpoint is um, widthwise using your lengthwise midpoint as a reference. And next you're going to take your compass and you're going to use it to find the diameter of your hub. And then you're going to use that measurement in order and use it for a theorem that I'm going to <clears throat> that you can learn how to do in a video that's in my description. And then your result will be the radius of your hub diameter and you can use that measurement or that distance to draw a perfect circle around the center of your cardboard that will then be cut out for your hub. Alright, next what you're going to do is you're going to take that little ruler that you made out of cardboard and you're going to stick your pen through the cardboard, the middle of the cardboard, and through the ruler. And then you're going to take your pencil through the other end of the cardboard and then you're going to draw a perfect circle around the uh, edge of the cardboard. Next what you're going to do is uh, apply the same rules to the other sheet of cardboard that you have. And now you have two perfect circles on two sheets of cardboard that will then be cut out. 
Um, yeah, now you're gonna start cutting. This is the part that really sucks. It takes about 15 minutes per uh, sheet of cardboard, but I mean that's just because I really like, I really want the quality of my car of my disc to be, uh, you know, high. So I take a lot of time to cut it all out. But I'm, you know, you could probably, you know, half-ass it a little bit, but. I just, you know, it comes out to be a really nice result. It's really clean. It's really, it's perfect. So, it takes about 15 minutes per sheet. You're gonna go ahead and do that to one sheet, then you're gonna do it to the other sheet. Just cutting away. And now you have uh, two perfect circles of cardboard. You know, just make sure that they're aligned, make sure that they're perfect. Um, so, now what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and draw a line from the center of the cardboard just out to any spot on the perimeter of the cardboard. And then what you're going to do is you're going to continue that line to the other side of the cardboard. And now what you're going to do is you're going to use a uh, another theorem that I teach you in the video in my description that forms a line that intersects a given line in a perpendicular manner. So you do that, and then you line up your ruler with the intersection marks that you drew, and then there you go. You have two, you have four nine degree angles. You're gonna continue that line that you just drew. I mean, you should just get something that's long enough, 24 inches long, to uh, draw just straight across, so that you don't have to continue lines with the ruler. It's kind of a hassle. And now you're going to use a third theorem that I teach in the video in my description that teaches how to bisect a given angle. So since we have four 90 degree angles, you're going to create eight 45 degree angles using this theorem. You're going to draw the intersection marks in each quadrant. I'm just doing this in one take, so there's gonna be, I don't, I don't wanna do this in 50 billion takes, so this is gonna take a while. A bunch of waiting. So there you go. You got four intersection points, and if you draw lines through all of them, it's going to form uh, eight 45 degree angles. I'm gonna be calling it the eight pizza slices on the cardboard. It's easier to remember. So there you go. You go ahead and you start to draw the line through the intersection marks that you drew. Disc tutorial commentary with Jonathan Wilson. So go ahead and draw those draw those lines. And now you have eight pizza slices. See, they're all perfect, uh, perfect 45 degree angles, each one of them. And then, uh, yeah. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your compass and you're going to find the distance between or the distance from the intersection of your spokes on the back wheel, assuming that your back wheel is laced cross, uh, to the flange of the hub. Alright, so next what you're going to do is you're going to place the sharp end of your compass at where the pizza slice meets the perimeter of the hub circle, and you're going to draw a line out to each pizza slice uh, with the or using the measurement that is currently set on the compass. Next you're going to set the compass to seven eighths of an inch and from each line that you just drew you're going to draw two more lines on each side of that little mark. So if you just look at the video you're going to draw two lines on each side of the marks we just drew. The marks that stand for the cross of the spokes on your rear wheel. And now you're going to use a theorem that I teach you in the description video on how to create a uh, line that intersects a given line perpendicularly. And now what you're going to do is cr actually draw the perpendicular line and uh, your end product should be an octagon that surrounds the center of your disc covers. And you see, what you're going to do is you're going to end up cutting up your gift cards so that they create a little snowshoe effect 
that you can put the zip ties through them and it's going to be a perfect you know just octagon shape around the center so it's just it's just a way to keep it nice and neat you could probably just uh, half-ass that but whatever so next what you're going to do is you're going to draw a little dot at each little intersection mark that you drew earlier you see just do what the video is doing and then now you're going to take your pencil and you're going to, or first you're going to line up your both of your disc covers uh, perfectly. You're going to take your pencil and then you're going to go ahead and uh, bash the pencil through each little dot that you just drew. And these, now you, now you have uh, dots or little holes that the zip ties are going to go through on each cardboard disc cover and they're both matching each other. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and line it up with where one of the pizza slices meets the perimeter of the disc and you're going to draw two dots on each side or one dot on each side of the pizza slice. Each dot is going to be 3 16 of an inch away from the pizza slice and then you're going to take your ruler and draw a line from the center of the cover to each dot. Uh, you're going to cut out this little tiny slice that you made uh, so that the cover will be allowed to form a cone shape and then also the little uh, gift card snowshoes that you make are going to be able to go over it and uh, next what you're going to do is you are going to uh, you're going to take your cutting device and cut out the circle that was drawn to give your hub some room when you mount the disc so go ahead and start to cut that out and then you're going to uh, apply the same rules to the other sheet or cover I should say and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut along the lines that we just drew to form the uh, little pizza slice that we made and you're going to cut along those lines so that our uh, covers will be allowed to form a cone shape when they are zip tied onto the wheel. So cut them both out. And then you can go ahead and uh, align your two covers to make sure that everything is uh, fitting nice and perfectly. And now it's time to move on to the gift cards. What we're going to do, and which is why I like to use Starbucks gift cards, is we're going to go ahead and cut off the little clear uh, section on each card because on each card it's the same distance or the you know it's just the same length. So you can cut that all off. It'll make it shorter, and every card will still be, every card will still be uniform. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to measure out the midpoint of the width on each card on one of the cards and then what you're going to do is you're going to line that card up with the rest of the cards and you're going to draw a straight line down from the midpoint you drew so that each card has a line on its midpoint and then you're going to do that again for the other side and now what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and draw a straight line down the middle of the card by aligning the ruler with the two midpoints that you drew. And you're gonna go ahead and do this for every single card. And then when you're done with all that, you're gonna take each card and cut it in half down the midline that we just drew. And this is going to create uh, 16 whole little snowshoe pieces of cards, which is what I like to call them. And then you're gonna use these to cover the holes or essentially go over the holes so that when you zip tie it together, the zip tie just doesn't rip straight through the cardboard. So now what you're going to do is you're going to find the middle point of the snowshoe uh, long ways. So go ahead and mark the middle point of that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find the middle point of it wide ways and then you're going to find the general center of the card by meeting those two midpoints together. So next what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance in between the holes on the covers and you're going to transfer that distance onto the little snowshoes that we have using the midpoint as a reference so that we have a guide point to know where to drill. 
So next we're going to be needing our vice. Uh, if you don't have a vice, you could probably just, you know, get a friend or a parent or something or sibling and have them hold the cards with some pliers. But what you're going to do, be doing is you're going to line up all the cards together. Uh, you are going to then uh, fasten them in the vise. Be sure to tighten the vise tight. Then you're going to prepare your drill. And then you're going to go ahead and start to drill uh, on where the little guide points that we drew on the card are. So then you're going to repeat that for the other side of the cards. And then we should have a we should have a finished product of a bunch of little snowshoes with two holes in them, and they should all be pretty uniform, all the same. So now we're gonna lay something down so that we don't spray paint all over the carpet and stuff or whatever. And then you're gonna go ahead and lay your boards down and then start to spray paint. I would go ahead and not spray paint like that. That's pretty dumb. I haven't spray painted in a while. I didn't know what I was doing. It's gonna leave it really uneven. I would go ahead and try to lay on some coats like that. Just nice, smooth, consistent, even flow. And then I would go ahead and go over the disc once and then go over it a second time, all at the same uh, same spraying. Then you're going to lay down all your little snowshoes, and you're just going to cover them with some spraying. I like to just go over it once long ways, go back over it the uh, short ways. And then here's the next day. It's one day of drying. Everything seems to have dried pretty good, pretty evenly. Discs look pretty good, pretty solid. And uh, it looks like we're ready to start constructing. All right, so let's get your rear wheel. Got to take it off your bike. Go ahead and uh, remove the tire from the wheel so that we can, uh, we'd be able to apply some tape to the rim later. If you have any spoke cards, you're gonna have to go ahead and take those off as well because they might mess with the zip ties later. So now go ahead and position uh, your uh, drive side uh, disc cover against the wheel and you're going to need to go ahead and draw on your valve hole that you want. You're going to have to go ahead and trace over it a couple times, you know, make sure that's nice and neat, aligned with the wheel, and then go ahead and start to cut it out, and then there we have a valve hole. Uh, so when we start to uh, actually fasten the disc onto the rim, I like to put the zip ties uh, through the little snowshoe cards that we have first and then you know it's kind of self-explanatory just kind of match up the holes make sure that they go straight through and then go ahead and put the other snowshoes on uh, matching the other side make sure that you don't uh, you know mix and match them you gotta make them uh, you know straight and then uh, when you zip tie it on you know you could go ahead and just cut off the end of the zip tie before you put it on so that you don't have to deal with it later and before you get to any serious zip tying just you know go bend look inside the rim make sure that there's no like bending all over the place zip ties make sure make sure everything's nice and straight and then uh, go ahead and start to put on the zip ties and uh, you're not gonna want to fasten them super tight yet just get them on there and when you start the tightening process, I like to start with my little cutout first and then slowly start to uh, go around the wheel. And I was a, I was kind of an idiot uh, when I made when I first made this discover, I made the little cutout uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch on each side and it turned out not long enough so I had to recut it out and it turned out super shitty. So now you get everything fastened down super tight. You can start to cut off the excess zip tie, and uh, looks like we're getting uh, looks like we're getting somewhere. So now you need to start with electric tape to go over the little cutout that we have. When I do it, I like to put electric tape on both sides of the cutout, and then one piece in the middle, because electric tape sticks to electric tape much better than it does to cardboard. And then go ahead and wrap that over to the rim. I like to cut off the excess with my cutting tool so it's nice and flush. Go ahead and uh, get that fastened down with your finger, and then it's going to look something like that. Uh, and then you go ahead and apply the same exact rules to the other side. Make it nice and uniform. Make it uh, all matching stuff. Cut off the excess with the cutting device. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tape half over 
the perimeter of the disc cover and half over the rim so that not only is it held on by the zip ties but it's going to be held in place by the tape because I've made a couple where the disc actually started to rotate over time so I couldn't really get to the valve hole and it got really annoying so that's what this is for but you need to make sure that when you're putting on the tape that you don't wrap it over the clincher uh, sidewall like onto the inside of the rim and over the bead because if you use a tire lever to take it off then it's going to be really hard to take off so yeah, just look at that, you know, just fasten it on with your fingers, get it nice and uh, press down the tape, install your tire, get it nice and pumped. And then bam. We got a disc wheel right there. Look at that thing. For how many mistakes I made, it didn't turn out too bad, so. So yeah, we've got a disc wheel here, you know? It's uh, definitely not the best one I've ever made, probably easily the worst one I've ever made, but you know, it still turned out alright. I was able to mask up all of my, uh, mask up all my mistakes and, uh, you know, make it look alright. So, uh, yeah, so don't forget about your valve hole, you know, just uh, comment if you have any questions about how to attach it onto the wheel. I didn't really do that that well because I was kind of tired and wanted to get it over with. But anyways, you know, just I hope you guys have a good experience with making your own disc, even though, you know, this just seems like a overwhelming, but it's not that bad, you know. End product is really fun. You can have a lot of fun with it. So uh, yeah, go out there and be aero, guys.